Why should you study math? I mean, you've heard the reasons you should like math. It makes you better at managing money, it'll set you up to learn programming, and algebra teaches you critical thinking, I guess? Math people are always like, And that's why everything in the universe can be measured with math! Isn't that cool? But why should you care? You're saying, I have a calculator in my pocket every day. The computer can do my taxes. I don't do my own carpentry. I don't work in finance. Or programming. Or rocket science. And you're right. You don't need math for any of those things. So why study it? Well, to answer that, we have to understand why it was boring in the first place. In classical education, we believe math is boring when it's taught incompletely. What if you were taught how to turn a bolt in one specific circumstance, but not how to use a wrench in other circumstances? What if you were taught how to follow recipes in a cookbook, but not how to cook? You'd be like a machine carrying out a single task instead of adapting to a new situation. In kindergarten, when you learned this, you added two plus four on your fingers or however you did it and you shouted out the answer, six. You were following a process, cookbook knowledge. And for kindergarten, that was fine. But in high school, when you saw this, you were baffled and bored. This process doesn't tell you how to solve this. Well, that's because math isn't a process. It's a whole toolbox of operations that you apply to new situations. Knowing the processes is important, but it doesn't make you good at math any more than knowing how to spell makes you a good journalist. Math is boring when we're stuck knowing only a handful of processes. So you're ready to learn how to cook? What if I told you there are only three things you need to know to understand all of math? The only three things are numbers. We don't like math when we can't recognize the numbers in all of their forms. But when you know how to read the forms, numbers don't have to be threatening. Just like the five simple machines, there are four basic operations in math. Anything more complex is based on these four and becomes simple once you know these four inside and out. Laws are rules numbers always obey. If you can understand this handful of laws, then you can always predict what numbers will do. If you know the procedures but not the numbers, operations, and laws, you'll always get stuck in new situations. But if you know the numbers, operations, and laws, then even if you forget the procedures, you'll be able to reconstruct them. And there's a lot to learn about numbers, operations, and laws. The point of this video is to show that the tools of math are actually simple. Without the tools, you'll be bored, frustrated, and angry. With the tools, you start to have control. So that's why math seems boring. But why do you care personally? Well, mathematics will also sharpen your mind for any endeavor you want to apply it to. I mean, algebra isn't the only area that has variables and unknowns. These tools double as habits of deduction, analysis, and problem solving. So they could help you write a paper, make a repair, or come up with an approach to deal with a new problem. Lots of ancient civilizations developed mathematics to measure land or collect taxes. But it was the Greeks who first realized you can think about math in itself, not just as a tool for counting and measuring, but as brain training for logic, ethics, and philosophy. Plato said the knowledge which geometry aims at is eternal. Now they weren't talking about studying procedures, the cookbook knowledge. They were talking about numbers, laws, and operations what math is. When you're studying those things, you're not just counting objects in the world of matter. You're also training your mind to operate in the world of ideas, what philosophers call the imperishable or eternal things. So all those boring reasons from the beginning are actually true. Math is the road to financial success, but it's also the beginning of the road to the love of ideas.
And you might never become a math person or a philosophy geek, but when math is something you can think about in itself, that's governed by simple rules, it becomes the same as any other subject, something you can have a conversation about, like history, politics, movies, or sports. Ultimately, math is just another series of insights you can have when you look at the world. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about this classical view of math, you can sign up for our free homeschool conference this summer at the link in the description. Or if you want to learn more about classical education in general or classical homeschooling in particular, go to classicalconversations.com to find an event or a community near you.